Ultimate Beastmaster is a game show that is widely known, mostly by me, as the show that is always dominated by pro climbers. And in season three, they really brought out the big guns. They added all kinds of new wild stuff. They added new obstacles. They got satellites. They even got Australians. But the biggest and most important change in season three is that we have a new opponent. See, in season one, it was climbers versus CrossFit. In season two, it was climbers versus parkour. And in season three, we had climbers versus climbers. It's so prevalent in season three that everybody's a climber that even the announcers talk about it. A lot of rock climbers trying to best the beast. But this video isn't about pro climbers dominating the game show like in the previous two videos, because there are still some competitors that aren't pro climbers in season three, and they may surprise you with how far they get. So starting off with round one, we have a brand new obstacle called Gearhead. And this is just a big gear that the competitors have to jump on and then jump off of. It seems pretty simple, pretty straightforward, but it's not. This obstacle absolutely decimates the competition. Usually the first obstacle is super easy. No, no, no. This obstacle determines whether you make it to round two or not. If you make it past Gearhead, you're good. The rest of the round one doesn't matter. If you fall on Gearhead like 50% of the competition does, you're done. I don't know what it is about Gearhead that makes it so hard, but some competitors are just jumping too early. Some are jumping too late. Some of them are just trying to jump through the wall. But so many people fall on Gearhead that one of the hosts decides to go down and try it themselves to see what all the fuss is about. And the real important thing about the fact that Gearhead is knocking down the competition is that Gearhead destroys the climbers. There's even these two pro climbers that show up and they're in the same episode and they have this like weird rivalry and they're like, I'm gonna beat you and I'm gonna be Ultimate Beastmaster. No, I'm gonna beat you. And they're like, they don't like each other and they get this cool intro with this like epic music and they're like training and climbing and they're like the two favorites to win and they both fall on Gearhead. But the main two competitors that we're really gonna follow through their journey in this video are Germany's Max Springer and Mexico's Hector Martinez. And the only real difference between these two is that Max is a boulderer and Hector is a pro climber. And both Hector and Max managed to make it through Gearhead. Now the rest of round one is where things get a little weird because it really doesn't matter because so many people fall on Gearhead that you can fall on any obstacle in round one after that and still qualify. But there were still some interesting obstacles. Like they had this one obstacle called Wheel Power where they had to like spin across this thing and only one dude was able to do it named Mozzie the Aussie. But uh, we'll talk more about him later. They had this one called Rope Burn that was so hard that nobody could finish it. Like even the climbers couldn't do this one. And one dude actually did make it to the halfway point. He was the only one and his name was Elvis <laughs> and he was this Italian like fire dancer dude so I thought that was pretty impressive although I did think the video he showed of himself fire dancing in the streets of Italy seemed kind of dangerous because like that's some really old architecture that's probably really susceptible to burning down and he's just like flinging sparks and fire all over the streets of Italy but you know Italians what are you gonna do and they even tried to add some more laches to be more like ninja warriors they added this one called ribcage row where the people had to lache across each one and one dude like completely like destroyed his shoulder on it and everybody was like ah, he's fine like it was just a dislocation and then they show him later with this huge surgery scar on his arm so needless to say he was disqualified from the competition but the most important of these obstacles that they had in round one was mag wall mag wall is just a rock climbing wall where the holds fall off intermittently but in season three they fall off way faster And this kind of recreates what happened in the earlier two seasons because the only competitor that makes it through Magwall is Max the Boulderer, and every single other competitor who is not a climber is incapable of completing Magwall. And this leads us into round two, and round two starts off with a brand new obstacle that I was a huge fan of, which is this like trampoline jump where you have to bounce off the trampoline and land on this pretty small platform, and I was just praying, hoping that there would be some funny falls on this because like trampoline fails are the best. Please let somebody have a funny fall on this. But weirdly enough, nobody really struggled with this one. Like everybody made it through fine. Uh, people were, you know, had some weird bounces, but nobody really struggled on this obstacle for the most part. Let's see if he can do this. And because everybody was able to make it through this trampoline obstacle, it made it so that the real obstacle that tore everybody down was the same as it was in the previous seasons, the dreadmills. 
Something about these dreadmills is just deadly to these competitors. They can't seem to jump onto them. They can't seem to jump off of them. Some of them just can't stand on them in the first place without getting their face ground off like a cheese grater. Barnacles. And a very small amount of competitors end up making it to the final obstacle of round two, which is this like weird, mantly traverse climbing obstacle. And I thought for sure like the non-climbers would struggle with this, but nobody falls on this obstacle. Every single person that makes it past dreadmills makes it through the final obstacle and completes round two. So this brings us to round three. And the very first thing I noticed with round three was that they ruined the ejector. You remember when the ejector used to be fun? They made it so you don't have to jump off the ejector anymore, so they pretty much got rid of all the funny falls and everybody manages to make it through ejector. But there is still one pretty funny fall where this guy goes way too fast into the rope and he is flying down. And he ends up getting so much speed that when he hits the end of it, he flings around in a circle and gets launched into this metal beam. But for those that didn't get launched off the obstacle, they move on to the second part, which is these poles that hang down that they have to campus across and traverse through. And nobody really struggles on this, except for one guy who's a pole dancer. I would have thought this would have been the one obstacle he was really good at, but I guess because they were square and not round, he, he just couldn't quite figure it out. But really, by the time we get to round three, most of the competitors are so whittled down to the best of the best that they all do really well on round three. So everything really just comes down to the final obstacle on round three, which is this giant like helix that you have to campus your way up and around. And this kind of brings us back to the earlier seasons where any of the climbers who made it to round three pretty much all end up qualifying just because of this obstacle. And uh, our buddy Hector from Mexico is the only competitor to actually complete all of round three. Hector's on pipeline. This is the first time we've seen anyone get this far. So this brings us into the semifinals where the top 12 competitors out of all the earlier episodes have to compete on the entire course start to finish and you can really tell that the competitors know how high of a level of competition it is at this point. They go for every little point they can get. I mean, they go hard. That point thruster, he goes for it. But the big twist of the semifinals is that they added another new obstacle, which is these spinning cylinders that you have to campus your way across. There's a lot of campusing, if you've noticed that. A lot of campusing in Ultimate Beastmaster. And there's this one competitor named Norman Lichtenberg. Can you guess what country Norman Lichtenberg is from? But Norman gets on this spinning obstacle and he's like trying to move and it's like bobbing up and down and spinning him around. And one of the cylinders comes down and just bashes him in the head. And each competitor gets an extra life, so they can start over earlier if they want to try to get a little bit further than they got. So he chooses to do that. He jumps on the rope swing and it slaps him in the balls, flings up and then whips him in the face. And he was super cool about it. He was like laughing about it. And he was like, I'm just happy to be here. And I was like, what a cool dude. Norman, if you're watching this, you're a cool dude, you went out like a champ. And probably the most important thing in the semifinals is that they put the mag wall in. So it kind of, you know, cuts out the riffraff, get them out of here, the non-climbers, get them out of here. Not a single non-climber has made it through the mag wall the entire season. Only climbers make it through the mag wall. So this pretty much makes it so that at this point, the only people that are gonna go to the finals are the climbers, just like in the earlier seasons. But there is one man who slips through the cracks a little bit. This British dude named Corbin manages to make it all the way to the end of the Magwall, but not finish it, which puts him just far enough to qualify for the finals. And you might be wondering, what's Corbin's discipline? What, what is it that Corbin does athletically that made him get this far? He doesn't have one. He doesn't say. He's just like, yeah, I work out and uh, I'm a veteran. So his little tag that tells you what he does just says veteran. And like the whole time, every interview, he's always like, yeah, I just work out. I do all kinds of stuff, like nothing in particular. So Corbin slipped through the cracks, but I was like, you know, he won't make it much further than that. But the real important thing is how our buddies Hector and Max did. Both Hector and Max did amazing in the semifinals. They both made it all the way to the dreadmills, but neither of them could make it past that. But even they weren't the top performers in the semifinals, because there was one man who stood above the rest. Mozzie the Aussie. Mozzie the Aussie is this Australian surfer slash vagabond slash rock climber who's really just here to have a good time. But not only does Mozzie the Aussie make it through the magwall and finish round one, he also makes it through the dreadmills, finishes round two, and makes it all the way to the end of the campus spinny thingy in round three, almost finishing 
the entire Beastmaster course in one run. So needless to say after this, Mozzie the Aussie was the number one favorite to win it all. And this leads us into the final episode of Ultimate Beastmaster Season 3, the finals. There are only six competitors left at this point, and they are the cream of the crop, the, the, the top of the whatever, they're really good. And that guy Corbin we talked about earlier that kind of slipped through the cracks, he lays it down early. You can't just be a climber. You can't just be a CrossFit champion. You, you have to have a series of, of other skills in, in your box. And I kind of brushed this off after I heard him say that. I was like, yeah, that's wholesome and all that, but obviously professional athletes are always gonna come out on top. And then this happened. He's gonna go for it! He gets out! No! 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 Because Hector was going for the extra point, he ended up missing the jump, making him the first competitor to be eliminated in the finals. So not only was Corbin right about that, but then Corbin decided to follow it up by completing the mag wall, being the only competitor in the entire season that wasn't a rock climber to finish the mag wall. So things are obviously getting a little intense at this point. We move into round two, we're down to five competitors. And because the competition level is so high, all five competitors make it to the end of round two where there's another new obstacle that is just downright ridiculous. I've never in my life done anything like that before. Got me quite off guard. And this obstacle is so hard, all four of the first competitors to run end up in the exact same spot with the exact same point total, meaning that they have to determine who gets eliminated based on who is the slowest one to get to the obstacle. And Corbin's the last runner to go on round two, and he is kind of taking his time. Like, he knows he has to get there faster than the slowest guy if he has any chance of making it to round three. And it's pretty obvious at this point that Corbin's going to be eliminated. He was the slowest one to get to the obstacle, and the only way for him to advance would be if he was able to do this obstacle that nobody else was able to do. Come on. Come on, stick this landing. Do it. So Corbin actually makes it the furthest on round two, meaning that he makes it into round three, where we're down to the wire. The final four competitors, one more will be eliminated before we go into the ultimate Beastmaster final challenge, which is almost always a rock climbing wall. And round three really comes down to the fine details. The one competitor that gets eliminated gets eliminated because he makes it slightly less far than the other three competitors. But Mozzie the Aussie really pulls out ahead here to prove that he's the favorite to win it because he's the only one that finishes round three. He's on pipeline. He's got to pump here. those arms. He's got to pump those arms. Come on. Look at him go. Somebody he put a cape it. on him. Go. Come on. Here he is. Mozzie the Aussie. So this all leads into the final championship between Mozzie the Aussie, our bouldering buddy Max, and Corbin the Vet. And this is where things really get weird when you're watching the show because the way they film this final is really odd. They film it in a way that makes it look like the slowest competitors were actually the fastest, and the fastest ones were the slowest, in this weird attempt to try to make it more dramatic where you're like, oh, he's definitely gonna lose, like look how much he's slipping, but they'll like cut out the slowest competitor slipping, so it makes it look like they did better. So what I decided to do to make it a little bit more clear is break down their splits so we could see exactly what obstacles the competitors are doing better or worse on. And these count down as time goes on, so the higher the number, the faster you got to that obstacle. So the first two obstacles they have to do are this big uh, climbing slope thing where they have to climb up a bit, jump across, climb up a bit more, jump back across, top out, and then run across these falling platforms. If you look at the point thruster totals they each got after completing these two obstacles, Mozzie the Aussie only got 165 points. Corbin actually got a 209 on this, meaning that he was significantly faster than Mozzie the Aussie. And Max got a 214, meaning Max was actually the fastest one through this, followed by Corbin, followed by Mozzie the Aussie. After this, the competitors have to complete Motherboard, which is brought back from season two, but it was made a little bit easier. They added footholds, so it's really not that hard of an obstacle anymore. But once they get to the top, they have to make a decision. There's a balancing platform you can either try to walk across or this giant spinning helix gear thing You can try to like spider crawl underneath and make it across and this is where Mozzie the Aussie uh, Really messes up because he's the only one that chooses to do the big spinning helix thing, which is obviously slower So when Mozzie finally gets across he hits his point thruster with a total of 340 points both Corbin and Max choose to do the balancing platform instead and they make it look like they're all struggling or they're going all slow They show Corbin like fall and they're like, oh my god, like look how slow he's going There's no way he can win but if you look at their point thruster totals again Max had a 347 and Corbin had a 351 meaning that Corbin is actually the fastest athlete up till this point point. and the final obstacle that all the competitors have to do is this big um, I don't even know what you call it, but this climb where you have to 
crimp on this rail and walk your way. I mean, you can just watch it. You can see what it is, but it gets narrower and narrower down until the very top. It's like a 30 millimeter crimp and you have to go all the way up and then top out around the edge. So if you've been watching the point totals at this point, you know that Mozzie the Aussie doesn't stand a chance at this point. Like choosing that spinning thing was a really bad decision. It cost him way too much time. And uh, really at this point, it's between Max and Corbin. But this was probably the most surprising thing in the entire show for me because Max and Corbin were pretty much tied at this point. They had almost the exact same amount of points before they started this crimp crawl. That's what I'm gonna call it. And Max is a boulderer. So I was like, it's boulderer versus guy who works out. I'm pretty sure the boulder is gonna win, but against all the odds, Corbin manages to be the fastest one to the top and wins Ultimate Beastmaster. Even though I always, you know, I'm gonna root for the climbers, it was kind of cool that the climbers just kept winning each season. And then finally, somebody came in and they didn't have any discipline. It wasn't climber versus this or climber versus that. It was climber versus regular guy who works out and regular guy who works out destroyed the competition. And even though this is a great way to end the series, I think enough time has passed that we need to bring back Ultimate Beastmaster. Let's bring back Ultimate Beastmaster season four. Sylvester Stallone, hit me up. Let's do it.